Okay, I've got the lumber back in my place. I'm going to document this whole thing. So that, um, what I need to do is take the lumber that I've got. I'm going to cut them, as I've already done that, cut them into the right size lengths. This is going to be for a, a medium or a Dayton or Illinois super, whatever you call it. I'm going to, so I've cut it um, into the right size. Now what I need to do is, is put the box tail joint cuts on the edges, right, just so up over there, the finger joints, box tail joints. So to do that, you use a dado blade. It's called stack stack dado blade. So what happens is you take this, that's a normal um, uh, saw blade, and then you stack these pieces in the middle, and then stack another blade on the end. So what will happen is you'll get something like this. That goes there. And you can... That goes there. Let me fix this. There. And then finally, the that goes on the end. So you get a you get a, a real thick, thick blade. So you can stack these because they're different. I've got different uh, inserts. So um, you can make it, you know, half an inch, five eighths, whatever you want, uh, just by adding more or less um, uh, blades in. So anyways, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the tongue out of the top of my table saw, take the current 10-inch uh, blade out. And what I did is I built um, a tongue. So this... This tongue that I just showed that that's built for 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 a single um, a single table saw blade. So I'll take that off and I'll put this one in. Actually, I don't need that, but I'm going to show you anyways. Um, I just cut that out of um, out of board, cut it to fit in there, and then when I put the um, the dado blade in, then I raise the blade and it cuts that nice nice groove in there. So that's important because I'm going to show you. Later on, how I built or um, uh, cut a groove into the, uh, the 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 jig or slide sled that I'm that I built for the um, to make the box tail joints. Okay, so there's the blade installed. I'll just get a little shot there. You can kind of see it's um, you know you can see how thick it is. Okay, so yeah, it'll it'll spin and cut a really nice um, three, exactly three quarter inch groove into the um, the edge of that wood. Okay, this is my uh, my own innovation of a, a box tail jig, um, box tail joint jig. But uh, usually, when you cut these box joint box tail joints, you do one at a time. So I figured I got to do a lot of these. So why not build um, uh, some sort of an assembly that will let me do multiple um, uh, pieces of it all at once? So what I did, I took a I built a sled, and uh, this sled with those two runners on the bottom, those runners go into the the holes at the bottom of my table saw, like so, and and as the sled does, it slides. Okay, so the benefit there is you can use the um, the the locked in um, uh, slides on the on the table saw to get a perfectly straight cut all the time. So what I'm going to do is take my boards and I'm going to lay them in the sled. I'm going to clamp them down. Uh, I'll, I'll make them neat, of course. I'll clamp them in, and then I'll run it through the um, the dado blade, and it'll put one perfectly um, straight um, cut in. Um, I've reversed my my position here, so I'm on the the I could call it the back of the the slot. So the way this will work, you see how I've got the board laying inside this um <clears throat> this it's it's a jig turned into a sled. So when I when I start the dado blade here, it'll it'll um, cut that way, and then when I push the sled through, the blade will hit there, right, right there, and it'll cut exactly a three-quarter inch groove um, height and width because I've measured the height of the blade too. And you can see I've um, I've uh, taken that long piece of wood. Uh, it's called a um, key. Normally in the in the jigs, the key is only about an inch or two deep because you're only putting one piece of wood in the in the corner like that and then cutting. So I thought, you know, I need to do a lot of these boards, so why not make a key that's big enough to hold, <clears throat> excuse me, ten pieces of wood um, and then lay them all in. If I lay them all in like this, this is just four, and then I'll use this clamp to, to clamp them in tight. Oops. sawdust on my nice sweater. Um, so then what I'll do is clamp, sorry, one-handed here. Um, what I'll do is clamp this in like that. Get it nice and tight. Okay. And then I can just push this um, sled right through 
and I'll have in this case four boards. But I, I'm gonna make I made this big enough to cut ten, um, ten pieces of wood. Okay, so do that. And the reason um, the reason this key is in there, by the way, I'll explain that. The key that the, the distance from the the key to the edge of the the wood the blade is exactly three quarters of an inch. And then what I'll do is cut the first the first groove in here, and then I'll lift the board up and and this notch or groove will fit over the key so you get exactly the same cut over and over so I'll cut put on the key cut again put the new cut on the key cut again put the new cut on the key etc till I'm till I'm done okay so uh, this will make it a lot easier um, I was gonna have to do something like 400 cuts because I have a lot of boards to cut notches into uh, grooves into so this is gonna save me um, 10 times as much uh, time as I uh, as I w would have normally spent okay Okay, I've got it all set up. I just measured the uh, the blade, made sure that the height is exactly three quarters of an inch. Um, I've only got two boards on there because um, uh, when you do box tail joints, the the tongue and the groove they need to to meet each other, so they need to be offset. Um, and that's why uh, the, the there's a space in there. So when we cut this, this is going to cut um, a, a, a groove and leave a, what's called a tongue on the edge. So I'm going to cut the groove here and leave the tongue, and then on the on the um, opposing boards. On the corner, I'll cut the groove on here, leave a tongue there, and then the two will will um, will fit together like a, they call it a finger joint. So that's yeah. that's perfect. So it's exactly what I wanted. There's a nice little three by three quarter inch by three quarter inch hole in there. Right. Now I've got the first hole, so I'll remove the clamps. Can you take off that clamp? And then you just pick this up and put it on the uh, on the key. And then I'll get it on there somehow. Anyway, so I'll get that set up and then I'll clamp it in and, and do another one and so on and so forth. One little modification on the fly. So what I did was I put a, um, I'll call that a sacrificial piece of wood in the back. So when I pull the, the blade through, <clears throat> I'll get perfect cut through the first two boards, and then it'll dig into the, the backboard a little bit. I could have I could have cut it right through the the um, the, the, the the call it the backdrop, whatever, but the brace. But uh, but I didn't. Okay, gonna do the second cut. <laughs> Clamps. Oops. Move it over. So that that's exactly what I wanted. I'm going to put in four um, four cuts. So I'm not going to bother taping this. It'll be a little boring. But you see what I'm getting at. I need to put four tongue and grooves, four grooves on this one, and then do a bit of work on the end. Okay. So uh, when I'm done, I'll show it again. Uh, so there they are. They're all done. So as you would imagine, if I when I when I get the other side cut, it'll be the correct tongue to groove, but these are the same cuts now, so basically these just fit in. Nice, nice little joint. And I'll I'll staple that together and this will become a a nice uh, beehive.